So you're going to, each going to get a uh, Google Doc that looks something like this. You're going to go to a, click the link here, and it should show up at this point. Please read this about the concept builders, and then you click the launch concept builder. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is that when you start the concept builder, notice I got into full screen mode here. Um, yours will say guest. What that means is you're going to have to take a screenshot at the end of this activity, either with your phone or actually a screenshot on the Chromebook, either way, and upload that so I know that you did the work. Um, we didn't get you accounts for these because I didn't think that we were going to use them that much, and we haven't, obviously. So you click start. This is going to be an apprentice level. It gets you six points. Complete the master level. It gets you eight points. Complete the wizard level. It gets you ten points. This particular concept builder is only worth eight points, so this would get you bonus, but they're pretty challenging. So I'm going to go here to the master level. So the first part, you've got five students, A, B, C, D, E, and an eyeball, which is right here. And the first thing you're going to do is locate the image by tapping on the grid. So for A, if we see the image in a plain mirror, it is an equidistant behind the mirror. So this green line is the mirror. So it would be somewhere like that. For B, it would be three behind the mirror. So somewhere like that. For C, there's not a mirror here, but if we saw an image, it would be at this point. But let's say I screw it up and say this point. Nope. This point. Nope. That point. Yep. D would be here. And E would be here. So I think those are pretty easy. The next point is locating all the images that the eye can see. Now what I had done is I had thought about <clears throat> um, looking at, thinking about, well, how would this reflect back to the eye in terms of angle of incidence and angle of reflection? The easier way to think about it is look at where the images are. And if a line connecting the image to the eyeball crosses the mirror, you can s see that image. So D, you could definitely see. A, you could definitely see. Here, I think you could definitely see that. For B. Now, with this one, it's a little bit tougher. For C, I'm actually getting a piece of paper and using it as a straight edge on my computer screen. That's what they recommend. But the other way you could think about it is, in order to reflect back here, I need a mirror halfway in between since C is equally far back. So I don't think you can see C, not visible. E, same way. If we look at this, that doesn't cross the mirror surface, so that is not visible. And if I check that answer, that away. If it goes odrats, that means you've got to try that again. So if you get the star, you'll have to do it once. If you get an odrats and it turns red, you have to do something similar twice. So if you need help, you go here, click on this, actually gives you some pretty good specifics about the particular question, how to think about that. You could also go to the physics classroom tutorial about playing mirrors and what portion of a mirror is required to view an image, and you click on those and it'll link to other parts of the physics classroom. So hopefully that helps, and happy concept building. All right, for the second concept builder that we've got here, which is Lost, forget what they call it that, but it is the Lost Art of Image Description, in this case it's for curved mirrors, you would click here when you do that, this page should come up. Actually, this page should come up here, and it talks about it. Location, orientation, relative size, and image type, real or virtual. So this uh, caused me a little bit of consternation, thanks Membean, when I just tried to start it, because I didn't read very carefully, so I'd ask you to read that and also listen to this simulation. Once again, you're going to be um, selected as guest. This is going to um, be yellow at the end, so when it says you've completed everything, you're going to need to take a screenshot of the whole thing. It'll say guest, but make sure you get where it says lost in there. The same way for the previous one, make sure you get where it says um, the title of the concept builder. So we're going to start that. So in this case, read this because it's important. The red arrow represents an object located in the region beyond the center of curvature for a concave mirror. So it is curving to the left, the reflective surfaces on the left. Identify characteristics of that. So that is an upright object. 
it is beyond the focal length, so it will be a real image. Those are the only two I can choose. Now when something's far away like that, I'm thinking about my ray diagram here. We are going to get an image that is in this region between the center of curvature and the focal point, and it'll be upside down. If I thought it was right side up, I'd click here, but I don't. I think it's upside down. Because it's closer than the object, I think it's going to be smaller than the object, and that's what this arrow is. If I thought it would be the same size as the object, I'd click again. If I thought it would be the same, bigger than the object, I'd click again. But I think it's smaller, so I'm going to check that answer. I want to make sure we get one here where we've got, I don't want to do that, I'm going to screw it up. So I'm going to screw something up here. I'm going to screw that up too. Oh, it's going to make me do this. Okay. So if it's at the center of curvature, it'll be the same size, so that I'll click that upside down. Real image. Now the image the object is upside down, so my image, which is a real image, will be inverted from the object. So that will be right side up. Same size, same location. <coughs> so some of the objects are upside down. Initially, some are right side up. Just remember, real images get flipped. Virtual images don't. Oops. Okay, this is what I wanted. So you're going to have image objects over here in this region in between the focal point and the concave mirror. You also can have objects over here to the right of the mirror, in which case the reflective surface is on the right, and that is a convex mirror. So remember, convex mirrors only produce upright, smaller, virtual images. This, because it is in between focal length and um, the mirror surface, should produce a virtual image that's behind the mirror, should be upright, should be larger. All right, so like I said, I think this is a really good concept builder, especially the things helping you think about orientation and size. I like the fact that some of their objects are uh, already pointing downward, some are pointing upward, because it lets you think about the fact that real images are inverted, but if something's already pointing downwards, an inverted image would be upward.